Our names are on, so I'm Kat. Lydia. Yeah. Ramos. Joseph. Cam. Brady. Robinson. Andy. Jay. Piano. David. Jordan. Nelly. Michael. Julia. Carl. Mandy. Dean. Anita. Lockie. Jacinta. And Bob. Beautiful Bob. Mm. I suppose I better do it before I get my ears torn off. Oh, yes, that's right. Thank you, my dear. Mm. That'll help a bit. I'll do. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. You go, Bob. Tell me about Well. Good morning, everyone. Good, morning. Good to see you all. And you all know what it's about, what they call Advaita in the Hindu teachings, or non-duality. Advaita means one without a second, not two. And that's what they point to, that everything is already that. That's the great mantra, I am that. And when you look into that, you see it's so. That's the chair you're sitting on, that's the room the chair's in, that's the space in the room, that's the tree, that's the flower, everything is that. Which we've learnt words about and discriminate it with the word. And when you look into the word, you'll see the word's not the thing either. Take the word water, try and drink that word if you can. The word fire, try and cook with it or heat yourself with it. So when you look into the word I or me, you see it's just another label we put on. And uh, that they talk, the thatness that they talk about, they call Sat Chit Ananda. Existence, consciousness, bliss. Another way of putting that being, knowing, and loving to be. Is there anyone who is not existing right now? No, you know you're existing. Anyone who is not conscious, you realise, no, I'm not unconscious, I'm not unaware, so you must be aware. Anyone who is not happy to be? Well, nobody wants to be dead right now. <laughs> so you see, you already fit that description with the point is it. So you are that, like everything else is that. So that's the non-duality they're talking about, that one essence of pattern, shapes and forms, experiences and expresses as everything. That uh, we've taken on the belief that we are these persons, this separate entity, these individual, and that's the cause of all our problems. Because non-duality is not to, and as soon as there's an idea of me, there's got to be its opposite other than me or not me. And that's duality. So we moved away from our natural state. As you say, you're already present and aware. Or you are that beingness. And you know that again because it tells human beings. Being human. We call, you know, Take the word being and uh, we call ourselves human beings and if we believe in God, you'll call God the supreme being. We'll take away that word human, take away the word supreme. Try and separate the being, this if you can. Anybody can say, the here can say, oh, I'm not being right now. You know for certain that I am, I am being. But then you put I am being this or that or the other. You put all the concepts, ideas on it that divide it, separate it. Not realising or recognising that that is all there is. That's what needs to happen. We need to investigate and look into it. And that's what they tell us in the scriptures. The false cannot stand up to investigation. And we've got these erroneous or false beliefs that we are this individual, this person or a separate entity. So the person 
is not reality. It comes from that word persona, the mask, which is a conceptual image based on concepts and ideas that we're told. So that reality or pure beingness is all there is. And you know that innately because that's being the chair, that's being the carpet, that's being the space and the content of space. Everything is that pure being and being is not time bound. Being is a spontaneous now. Past is dead. And you can't, get, you'll say, oh, I was in the past. Well, try and live yesterday. Try and live a moment ago. You realise you can't go back and live yesterday or tomorrow or the past because it's gone. You've got a concept about it and if that concept is not there or the memory is not there, you can't say there is such a thing as a past or a future. You can anticipate and imagine the future and that's what we do, but you can't tell me what you're going to do when you leave here because it's not the actual. So past is dead, the future hasn't arrived, but this now is spontaneous. It hasn't got any duration. When does now begin? It's beginning now. When is it ending? It's ending right now. So you've never moved away from this presence awareness, so it seems to be so. And we believe that. We'll have a look at that word belief. And you'll realise the belief is not the actual. The definition of belief, if you look in your dictionary, is an unquestioned acceptance of something in the absence of reason, acceptance of an alleged fact without positive knowledge or proof. You put your beliefs to that test and see how much they, how they will stand up. They'll fall apart when you look into them. Am I this body? Am I this mind? Am I this person? Well, innately you know you're not the body because you say, my body. Don't you say my house, my car, my coat? You know you're not the house. You know you're not the car. Maybe you're not the body either when you look into it. My mind. Show me a thing called mind. And you realise there's no such thing as mind apart from what we call thought. And if thought is mind, which particular thought are you? And you realise that that I thought is what you believe you are. But... Uh, if you were that I thought, you'd be frightened of losing it. But you give it up gladly every night when you go to sleep. If it were that thought and you went to, without that I thought, that would be the end of you, but you know it's not. So you see, all these thoughts or concepts are ideas or images we have about ourselves. And the Sagarata tells you, nothing can trouble you except in your own imagination. And that's very true when you investigate it. Imagination. Break it down to image in, image in, imagine. And that's what we're doing. We're creating mental or conceptual images about this and that, that and everything else. But the image is not the thing. Have a look in the mirror. What do you see in a mirror? You see an image in the mirror or a reflection. Now you go up to that mirror and try and grab your, your image out of the mirror. You'll see that there's nothing there. It's only a reflection or an image in the mirror. You can't say it's not because it appears to be so, but you can't say it is because you can't grab it. It's got really got no substance or any independent nature, but it appears to be so. And when you look at the rest of this manifestation, you'll see that it's a phenomenal manifestation. And they describe that the great perfection is non-conceptual awareness. <coughs> now, there's none of you is, who is unaware right in this moment. Everybody is aware, but you can't tell me what awareness is. But without it, there is no life there at all. So there's awareness of this, awareness of that, awareness of everything else. And the awareness of means all the this and that we're referring to is objective. All objects appearing to this seeming 
subject me. When I investigate me, I am this body, well you know you're not the body. What's the body made up of? Elements. Earth, air, fire, water, space. All those elements are forming this pattern we call the body. Take the air out of your body, how long would you last? Take the fire, the body temperature, you'd soon die of hypothermia. Take the water, your body 60% water. Get off the earth if you can. So when you investigate, you see you're not separate from those elements. And all of those elements have been broken down into subatomic particles. And those subatomic particles are nothing but energy vibrating into patterns, shapes and forms. But the pattern, shape and form is appearance only. Just the same as go down to the ocean and see a ripple on the water which becomes a wave, many waves. We call them waves, but what are they? They're nothing other than water. So you see, all these images and ideas and concepts and words we create are nothing but vibrations of that intelligence energy. And I call it intelligence energy because the way this manifestation functions implies it's suffused with an innate intelligence. That body, for instance, you know, the capacity of reasoning, and heart beating, hair growing, implies it's not a haphazard or a accidental happening. It implies it's suffused with intelligence. The flowers, the birds, the trees, everything else implies it's suffused with intelligence. Intelligence energy, which I call the activity of knowing. You are knowing right now, and that is intelligence. And intelligence is an activity, a movement, a vibration, and that's what's happening, the activity of knowing. And that is what you are. Not the body, not the mind, not the persona, the mask or conceptual image. You are that pure intelligence energy. And what happens with that? Well, you've got these body minds. Let's look at the mind the same way. What's the mind when you were investigating? You say my mind. You realise there's no such thing as mind apart from thought. So, if thought is mind, are you a thought? Well, you'll realise you're a bit different if you a thought. No such thing as mind, apart from thought. As Shakespeare told you that three or four hundred years ago when he says there's nothing either good or bad, but thinking makes it so. And that is what happens. Where does this thinking begin? You'll say, I was born. But can anyone actually remember your birth? Well, you say, people say they can remember the birth. But how could you remember it when you had no words? You can't say, I was born, because you didn't know. And you didn't learn any words till you were about two, two and a half. And that's when the capacity of reasoning developed with the learning of words. Parents fussing around you spoke these words and the capacity of reasoning had developed into you in that time and you were able to pick up on those words. And where did you begin? If you say I was born. Well, have a look at it. Go back to your father and your mother. That animating pattern, that life energy, through the food he's eating, the prana and everything, that you call your father, that animating life, you call your father in that life through the prana and the air he's breathing and the, what he's eating, enabled in that pattern a little microscopic particle called a sperm to form. You can't see it with your naked eye, but that sperm was suffused with intelligence. It knew what to do. And the same in your mother, that animating life essence in your mother, enabled in that pattern another microscopic particle called an egg or an ovum to form. That ovum was suffused with intelligence, it knew what to do, it attached itself to the wall of the uterus. And the sperm, being suffused with that intelligence, also knew what to do, it swam to the ovum, put it under a microscope and see. It is life itself that knew what to do, 
it swam to the ovum and penetrated the ovum. And when those two came together, the life intelligence energy in it doubled that sperm and ovum, doubled it and formed the little embryo, the little fetus, which is what you are today. What were you doing about it then? When you didn't have any words at all. Nothing but that intelligence was functioning, that life was functioning in you. You were breathing, heart beating, hair and fingernails were growing, food being digested, the life was there. And that's what Nisargadatta tells us, there is only life. There is nobody who lives a life. Pointing out it's not this body that lives a life, it's the life that lives on life. And out of that life, more life comes. And that's what Christ tells you, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. People thought he was talking about himself, he wasn't. He was talking about that sense of presence, which is innately with each and every one. Each and every one of you knows I am. And that I am is that life expressing, patterning, shaping and forming as this believed in person. But we've taken the wrong take on it where the parents told you were little Johnny, you were born and you are this person. And the person is not a reality. It came from that ancient Latin language, persona, the mask. Pointing out we've got a mask of concepts. I am Bob, the Australian, the good fellow, and also they're all concepts that I take to be me and take to be real. But they tell you again in the scriptures, the great perfection is non-conceptual awareness. It's that awareness which is out of any concept. And is any one of you unaware right now? You know, certainly I'm aware. You know, you're not, you can't tell me what this awareness is. But it's living here. And as Agatha again tells you, nothing can trouble you except in your own imagination. Break that word imagination down to imagine, imagine. And realise that's what we're doing. We're creating these mental or conceptual images, patterns, shapes and forms, like reflections and images in the mirror, like the image of the water, the light on in the water makes it appear like a blue sea. But you go down to the ocean and try and grab a bucket of blue water out of the ocean. You can't because you say it's not blue at all. It appears to be so. Like the blue sky. Sky is space. What are we in right now? We're in space. And if you went, there's no blueness here. And if you went up 20 or 30,000 feet in a plane, the space would still be further out. So the space is not blue. In this room, as I say, is space. And they call it space like awareness. The basic space of phenomena. The base of it all is space. And the base of all this manifestation is that same space. That you and I and everything else is the content of space. All things appear in space. And you and I are things. The trees are things, the flowers are things, the birds are things. They're all things are the content of space. Space is no thing. And it's the content. Everything appears in space. If space is no thing, can something come from no thing? Well, you don't have to be a Rose Scholar to work that out. If space is no thing, as all these things, though they're patterning, shaping and forming, and appearing to be real, uh, is no, uh, no thing. Uh, only appear to be so. And if that vibration, that intelligence energy wasn't there, they couldn't go right into any patterns. Intelligence energy, the activity of knowing. There's nobody here who is not knowing right now. Not talking about tomorrow or yesterday or something in the future. The actually actuality of knowing is right in this moment. The actuality of being is right in this moment. Not what was yesterday or what will be tomorrow. What was yesterday is gone. It's dead of the past. That's why you need to investigate time and see that the concept of time is not the actuality. You say, I was in the past. I'll say, well, try and live a moment ago. Try and live yesterday. 
you realise you can't go back and live yesterday. You can recall some of it, but you can't recall all of it. You can recall something that happened last week or last year, but only a part of it. The rest is gone, and when it's gone, it's gone for good. So what you're recalling is happening right now, spontaneously, which is the now. What about the future? Well, you can anticipate and imagine what you're going to do after you leave here, but you can't live it. Your anticipation and imagination is taking place right now. So you see, you've never moved out of this actuality. The basic space of phenomena, the base, is that cognizing emptiness, which the Buddha pointed out, he called it a cognizing emptiness. And we think we are cognizing that emptiness. But it's not, it's the emptiness that has the capacity of cognizing or knowing. And he made the statement then that emptiness is form, pointing out that all this manifestation that's forming and patterning everything, including you and me, is nothing but that emptiness vibrating into seeming patterns and forms, which are suffused with that intelligence, that activity of knowing. Emptiness is form, and he turned it round the other way and said the forms can be nothing other than emptiness. So whichever way you look at it, you come back to that absoluteness, and that's what it is, absolute. What can you add to the absolute? You realise if it's absolute, nothing can be added to it. If it was, it wouldn't be absolute. You can't take anything away from it. If you could take anything away from it, it wouldn't be absolute. Another thing that the great perfection fits that statement. The Buddhists call it the great perfection. You can't add anything to the perfect, nor can you take anything away from it. And they give it to you in one sentence there. The great perfection is non-conceptual awareness. What's non-conceptual awareness? Well, none of you are unaware right now, but what's the thoughts, feelings going on, the activities? Aren't they concepts? So you're obscuring your true nature with these concepts. And that when recognised and seeing for what it is, and you're not let, locking into the concepts, you'll realise that this manifestation is transient. It's constantly changing. It has no beginning and has no end. Can you find a centre or a spot that you can say where space begins? You can't. It has. You can postulate and think of something billions of light years away that it began, but what was it beginning then? It would have to be in space. There's nothing outside of this space. Everything is the content of space. Space is no thing, yet everything appears in it. You look in a mirror, what do you see in a mirror? You see an image or a reflection. Now you can't say that image or reflection is not there. But try and grab the reflection out of the mirror, you can't. Or the image out of the mirror, you can't. So you can't say it is there. And that's the same thing with this manifestation. It appears to be so, but when you investigate it, you see it's not as it appears to be. It is absolute, not as it appears. And the appearance is not reality. The appearance is what is obscuring it. It's not taken away or anything, but it's just covered over or obscured by the concepts. And the great perfection is absoluteness or non-obscuration. And what are you left with then? Is this, are you, can you get out of this presence awareness, this activity of knowing? Is that that pure being there? Now this beingness, you know that you are being right now, that's another way of putting a satchel in hand, is being, knowing and loving to be. Anyone who is not being right now, and you'll say, of course I'm being. Anyone who's not knowing, yeah, you certainly are knowing, knowing this or that. Either. Anyone's not happy to be, when well, nobody wants to be dead right now, so you are that being, knowing and loving to be. But being is not becoming. We try, we think we've got to become something. 
they've got to become enlightened, they've got to become realized. But really, that you can never become anything because you go back into the concept of time. And that's all the time is, a mental concept. Because where does that leave you? That leave you as you are in this very moment, the actuality, the reality, the absolute. Now, if you recognize that you are the absolute, what can be added to the absolute? Nothing. What can be taken away from it? Nothing. So who can be inferior to you? No, nobody or no thing, because it's only the absolute. Who can be in, superior to you? Nobody. So those two concepts go out of the, out of the window. So if there's nobody superior to you, nobody inferior, what would you want from anybody else? Well, nothing can be added to the absolute, nothing can be taken away. If I'm the absolute, I need nothing. Then you understand why they say that all these things are the added things. Nature itself, or that life as or intelligence energy, gives you what is needed. And what is not needed, or what reality, comes up and causes the psychological suffering, the fear, the anxiety, the stress, the guilt, the jealousy, the envy, the unhappiness because you take yourself to be a separate entity. With that sense of separation, it's isolation, mm. vulnerability, insec insecurity. And that's what we're living. We're living from that point of view without questioning the absolute. What is wrong with right now if I don't think about it? Well, if I look into that and realise if a thought is paused for a moment, I can't say it's good or it's bad, it's pleasant, it's painful, anything at all about it, without the concept. That's why the Buddha told you a couple of thousand years ago, it's non-conceptual awareness. And nothing can be added to it when he made the sign that emptiness is form. And it's just cognizing emptiness that all these pattern shapes and forms are appearing in. Emptiness is form, and the forms can be nothing other than the emptiness. And that is so. There's one reality, the one actuality, the one being, which we simply conceptualize and divide into the many. But they call it the absolute. The absolute, the totality, and everything is that absolute. And the definition of a reality of that's a phenomenal, it's a phenomenal manifestation. And the definition of phenomena is that which appears to be. So all we are here and everything in this room and everything outside of this room is appearance only. It's only seemingly so. And when it's understood and realised or recognised, just as a dream, when you wake up from the dream at night, you realise it never happened. It seemed very real while you're into it. But all the dream disappears. When you wake up in the morning, something might be remembered. But as long as it's remembered, it's not the actuality, and soon forgotten. But we don't realise, as Nisargadatta tells us, we're dreaming a dream you call the world. And he says, stop looking for ways out. The dream is not your concern. Your concern is you love one part of the dream and not the other. He says, love all of it, or none of it, and the rest will be done for you, as it is. Well, that same life essence that brought you into existence. It's brought about the capacity of reasoning, the body and the mind and fashioning and so and forming. And uh, so that's what happens. You recognise your true nature and all this psychological suffering, when recognised, will drop away. It's only me that can be unhappy. Only me that can be fearful, jealous or envious or anxious. Me is the cause of all my psychological suffering. And the effects are the anxiety, 
the pain, the stress, the guilt, the jealousy, the envy, all the effects have to cause me. And that's all the so-called karma is, cause and effect. What happens if I look at the cause, me, and see the cause as a conceptual image? There's no reality, it's just a concept I've got about myself, that the energy of belief has gone into it because it's not questioned and investigated. And see, ask the simple question, if I see that the cause, me, is a fiction, and happen to look, what happens if I recognise that the me is a fiction? How can there be an effect if it's not related to a cause? So if not related to a cause, the me, what must I be left with? I must be left with what is. What is is not what was. It's not what will be. It is this actuality in the moment. Anybody who is not aware is not aware. That isness is pure being. It's knowingness right now. Not unaware. It's awareness which we put the concepts or I'm unaware or I'm fearful or anxious. And that's how it functions. Something comes up and you like it. Not realising that everything, everything, so-called thing in this benefit, is transient. There is nothing static about any of it. It's all continually changing. Something comes up and I like it. We don't want the good things to go. We want to keep them forever. Not realise no matter how much you love them, how much you want to keep them, how much you like it, no matter what you do, it's going to change. Because it's all transient, it's all changing right now. There's thousands of cells dying in that body right now and being replaced. What are you doing about that? Nothing. But you know that a liver cell is not going to replace a heart cell. A heart cell is not going to replace a skin cell. Each cell in that body, suffused with that intelligence or life, knows what to do. And that is what you are, the life. So if something comes up and you like it, you don't want it to go away, not realise that everything is transient, everything is changing right now, you don't want it to change, you want to keep it there. So what do you do? We resist it. Realise that resistance is conflict. If you're resisting, resisting something, you're in conflict with it. And conflict makes you unhappy, or not well. Resistance is conflict, and conflict is unhappiness, fear. Anxiousness, depression, guilt. That anxiety resistance is uneasiness. And another layer to that is uneasiness is disease. So there's resistance, conflict and disease going on in us all the time. Something comes up that I don't like. Oh, I don't want this one. I'm a sinner, I'm unhappy, I'm general. I've got to get rid of this. So what do I do? Instead of leaving it as it is where it'll change about, we resist it again. Conflict, trying to push that out, disease, uneasiness, and so it carries on. Not realising or recognising its change. We'll have a look at that, investigate. Look at nature. In nature, the earth's rolling around the sun. Out there, now it's light, because the earth is facing towards the sun. And then there's light. It'll keep rolling around, and the other end side of the earth is in darkness because it's facing away from light. But the earth keeps rolling around and soon it'll change and this one, this part will be facing away from the sun, it'll be dark. And the other part will be light. Now does the sun know anything about darkness or light? It doesn't. And does light itself know anything about darkness? It doesn't. But it's happening. So look at your thought. And it's not divided. It's going to take daylight and dark and not divided. Look at these thoughts, they're not divided, but we do divide them. We think it's good and bad, pleasant and painful, and take it to be real, not realising that they're two ends of the one stick, and they'll constantly change. As the earth, if it's facing the sun right now, will appear to be dark, as it'll come darkness around it, leave it as it is, which we can't do anything about it anyway. We don't have to change it, because it will change of itself, and it does. The bad thought comes up and we got to re we want to get rid of it, so we resist it. And in that resistance and conflict, 
we keep it there longer than it should be. The good thought comes and we don't want it to go, we hang on to it. Again, it's that resistance we put into everything. Leave everything as it is, unaltered, unmodified, uncorrected. No preference, no partiality, no comparison. And it changes by itself. Change is transient. It's constantly movement transient. And it's all a vibration of that intelligence energy and that is what you are. And uh, that's about it. <laughs> so, <laughs> some of you even know it. If you've got an idea, you want to tell it, put something in it, you might repeat it in different words to where I am and that somebody else might hear it and resonate with it. And somebody might have questions. But that's the point. If you know anything about it, put it out there. It's something you might hear something. Said. That's how it's passed on by people recognising it and putting it to their concept of words or ideas. But it's up to each and every one of you. So you don't have to see it, sit here like stunned plovers. <laughs> Just ask yourself and recognise it and keep it going. So away you go. Thank you. Put my ears back in again. I just want to say uh, that there was a beautiful scene on. Uh, we have welcome messages from people around the, around Australia. Okay. Good mornings and good mornings and good morning everyone in the gathering. And uh, what Bob finished the spiel with, you know, that everything is transient, everything is constantly changing, and that is what you are. It kind of seems like it's almost contradictory to say you are that which never changes, you are the reality. There's no contradiction here whatsoever because there's no, no duality. So it is non-dual. Both transient and the stillness, they one. You know, in essence, that is the stillness and um, silence and what, what else? You want to call it whatever. And in the expression, it moves, it vibrates, it turns into all the shapes and forms and patterns. So it is one. So it's nothing that you are not. <laughs> and some plovers, uh, Laura <laughs> says. <laughs> Yo, Anna says, unaltered, unmodified, uncorrected, the best. Mm. Yes, and then unless someone is going to start us up and say something uh, really good, we're going to maybe start from honoring the uh, custodians of the land. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to start us, Jack? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for your sharing. It's a shoe it's not a mic. Um Yeah, I don't really have anything to say. Just um Yeah, yeah, it's fine. <laughs>
comments. So cool. Love the beach. <laughs> That's from Laura. And we had the fountain of hearts flowing as you were playing. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Did you want to say something? I've said enough. <laughs> Have you? <laughs> that was beautiful. As you were talking, I was um, thinking a little bit about a conversation I had with a neighbor or some a friend of mine. And we were just chatting about, like, well, her story, you know, what was going on in her life. And she was saying, you know, as long as I can see an end to the story, I'm good. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I was thinking, <sighs> that's the problem. <laughs> it doesn't end. What if, and what if the story is like you've got terminal cancer and you're just going to drop dead of a long slong? You know what I mean? There is no end. There's no end. There's, there's, you got a problem. But what if you can just see that it's like just, oh, it's an appearance. You know, this is just something like, you know, I guess like they say in the movies, you go to see the movie. Mm. It says now appearing. Okay. Mm. It's appearing now. And as you mentioned before, you go to sleep at night. Yeah. And you go into that deep sleep and there's no, no appearing. In that moment, it seemingly picks up the next day, appears. But it's like, if you could handle a fraction of a trillionth of a second, just this nanosecond. I, I like to refer to this fleeting present moment as this nanosecond. <laughs> it's coming and going, but it, it's like, I know even that is just mm. transient. So, yeah, but, but you, most of us can handle a nanosecond. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 can, you, can you just see the end of this second? Like, you know, it makes it a lot... Um, mm. It's it's uh, there's no long term. Oh yeah, I have to wait twenty years until this story ends, or five years, or I don't know when. Or anyway, it's just it's kind of game changing. Mm. To when you can just see that. Wait a minute, it's a trippy movie. It's quite the movie. <laughs> you know, it's got all the characters and the drama. It's Academy Award winning, <laughs> and yet it's still a movie. I'm very grateful. Mm. Tells you, Thank you. It tells you that in all the ancient tales. What I told was I said they used to talk about the fairy tales. Every fairy tale begins once once upon a time, mm. and always ends with living happily ever after. So you say it's got that in it. It's all fairy story. And what do you say, Julia? Yes, I, I hear a lot of people actually looking at their own life and, oh, look, I just need to wait till I get to that promotion. I just need to wait till the kids go to school. Oh, I just need to wait till the kids get and out of the house. And then there'll be another one. <laughs> and then I need to wait for the retirement. And then I need to wait for the divorce. And that's sitting in the waiting room all their lives instead mm. of living every moment fully living in the meantime because the change will come inevitably whether you wait for it or not <laughs> yeah. yeah great point and you know story is really not a problem is it's, it's story is beautiful I, I think the problem is just the belief in the it's story the belief, totally yeah it's it's is the identification with the dream character yeah. in the story and even seeing that dream character and it's just really marveling and enjoying Seeing how that dream character evolve in every situation or respond to every situation. Because as much as you don't know your next thought, you don't know your next response. You may imagine or anticipate judging by the past responses, the probable outcome. But the truth is, every moment is a new, fresh and new moment of mystery unfolding. And having that attitude, life becomes an, quite a different game. It becomes a fascinating adventure. Yeah, and the story is part of it. Yeah. Andy. Yes, I, I like that uh, being uh, stuck in the waiting room of different narr narratives, whatever the narrative is, and it's it's like you are a stunned mullet while you're in that waiting room, and it's you know whether or not you you've had enough of the narrative to let it go and and really engage in life again, mm. you know, moment to moment. Yeah. 
mm. in presence awareness. Hey. It's like um, waiting for the knight in shining armor, which is really just waiting for the external factor. So always just sitting here for once the external factor comes and takes all the bad bits out and just leaves the good bits. Yeah. And that's, yeah, we can just have it all right now mm. by letting go of all the narrative, yeah. <laughs> And it's also listening to the mind which constantly complains and that's its job. That's actually a pretty wonderful job that the mind is doing by complaining and looking for the ways of improving things. But believing in complaining mind is completely missing out on the fullness of life right in this moment. Because when you look from your heart, every moment is full and complete and there is so much going on in every moment. But the mind will come up, the thought will come up and focus on defects because the intention of thought is to modify, correct and fix and alter. And that's a beautiful, beautiful function. You know, it wouldn't be a civilization, it wouldn't be growth if not for that function. But if that function is, is uh, believed to be the only reality, the reality of deficiency, the reality of what is wrong or which external factor is missing, like Tony says, well, you will live in hell <laughs> and we miss out on the fullness. Why not to just see it as one of the factors, like Bob often says, you know, there is seeing, hearing, tasting, touching, smelling going on in every moment and thinking as well. Like really considering every of those factors, every of those senses kind of evenly and not selectively giving all of the belief into just a thought and missing out on what's presently happening. Missing out on really living fully. Peter, you have the mic. Yeah, is life uh, fundamentally problematical? <laughs> That's an interesting question, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Or is uh, life, uh, as Bob, Bob, you pointing out all the time to us that there's a different way of looking at things mm. rather than being a serial problem solver. Are you a serial problem solver or simply one who is alive? Some the Dancing totality of life. Mm. Dancing yeah. with the mystery. Yeah. Right. yeah. That's it. Mm. Mm. And the dance ing, as you say, not the dance air, me, an individual, but the dance ing, the whole <laughs> ing. Mm. Yeah, there really is only one problem and one solution, isn't there? As they say in the Course in Miracles, and one problem, one solution. I heard something about dancing with the mystery, and the the issue I have with my ego is it wants to know the what is the mystery. Mm. And of course, once it knows what the mystery is, it won't be a mystery any longer. So I can't <laughs> dance with it. You know, like. Beautiful insight. <laughs> and, and what's the ego? That's a mystery. <laughs> so, so just a moment to acknowledge and to bless and to have reverence for and to grieve and to enjoy this moment that's just gone. Mm. You know, before the next moment arrives. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are now. Mm. Uh, thanks, Bob. It was a great spiel this morning. And uh, as you were talking and you were repeating those different pointers, the notion of freedom came up. And uh, I recall those moments, few and far between, seemingly because most of the time they're blocked with this uh, general overhanging uh, samsara. And um, uh, today I realised that when the notion of freedom came up, it wasn't, um, it wasn't like a breakthrough or anything. It was just, that's what it is. That's what we're talking about, this great perfection, is absolute freedom. Mm -hmm. So that's, um, that's remarkable. Yeah. <laughs> that, <laughs> so here we are. What? We what? take on all these problems and... And you're right. 
and oh, there sorry. in the backgrounds, you know, waiting quite still. Natural perfection. Mm. Total freedom. Yeah. Isn't that what Simon and Garfunkel talk about? Freedom's just another name for nothing left to lose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's actually that was Janis Joplin. Chris. Yeah, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Chris Robinson. Well, somebody. The one, yeah. One essence. <laughs> yeah, good, Rod. Beautiful. And just, um, you know, adding to the existing comments already that um, without being present in the present moment, we miss the absolute ability for sp spontaneous expression mm -hmm. of life. It's spontaneous. It's well beyond what we could ever conceive of ourselves with the little mind. Mm. And this incredible uh, spontaneity mm. arises of the whole expression of life. It's, it's a magnificent, that's freedom. Mm. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, there's no, there's no room for taking credit for anything that arises when you are fully, fully present. Mm. Mm. And even if there's no, I mean, you are that a good example of that uh, presence. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I have a comment here from uh, uh, Catherine. She says, uh, she's asking if the cards are still available. Yes, the cards are available in here. Catherine, if you show up, <laughs> you can, can come and get one. But on Amazon, unfortunately, I'm going to be have to withdrawing them in probably a couple of days because I got another line of threats from Amazon. <laughs> they demand from me to uh, get Australian business number, which I am not eligible for. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they will just keep the money. They keep the stock. Mm -hmm. I spoke with about 10 people. I exchanged about 20 emails. They all incapable of actually understanding <laughs> the situation. <laughs> Plus, they wanted to send me a postcard to confirm my address, and they say 10 days. But the postcard is going to arrive in 12, so that they also incapable of understanding. And Laura says she loves the cards. I think everyone who gets the cards so far, I heard, they actually love them. I mean, I can't take credit for any of the beautiful sunsets and sunrises and day skies, because that's nature. And I can't take credit for any of the beautiful pointers, which is also nature, speaking through Bob. <laughs> Yes, they are beautiful. So if there is anyone who, who ever wants them from Amazon, they are half price right now. Yeah. You can buy two or three. That's... Uh, Christmas is coming. Mm -hmm. Christmas is coming. Buy directly from Cat. Buy <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like purchase it directly through Cat. Yeah, yeah. Because, because later on they won't be available worldwide anymore. The, the ones that in, in UK, I think we have one last box there. And that's it. That, that will be it. But uh, thank you for asking, Catherine. I'll keep on to you. We're stunned lovers. Stunned lovers. <laughs> okay, let's draw the cards then. <laughs> Shall we draw the cards? <laughs> Bob, draw the cards. He can draw. What's this? Just draw one and read the pointer. Oh, there you go. See, first it says here, resonate with that. Now let's see what we resonate with. The manifestation is a dream, like illusion, projected and sustained by the attention of energy of belief. Mm. Nothing can live without energy. Deny it to thoughts and they will die out. There you go, as simple as that. Mm. Just just see how is the energy, the belief that feeds everything, the whole dream, the whole illusion. Simple recognition. And that's how far away we are, one thought away from the absolute freedom. What's wrong with right now if you don't think about it? Nothing. Stun plover. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna plumb the lovers. <laughs> so dri driving up today, um, that idea of letting the thoughts go and and because uh, there's 
for me, there's been a tendency to push away, you know, to try to get to silence and stop the thoughts or get cross or resist the thoughts. <coughs> or as Bob says, grab onto the good ones and push the bad ones away. Mm. But it's just, um, yeah, driving up today. Cause I, I, even, even driving, like I always have to be a little bit faster than the speed limit, you know? <laughs> And I'm thinking, well, why do I have to be a little bit faster than the speed limit all the time? You know, and if someone's slow in front of me, you have to get in front. <laughs> so I just put it. <laughs> yeah, right. And then you're judging everyone, they're getting in your way. And so I just thought, oh, I'm just going to put it on cruise and just sit there. And then the thoughts, yeah, it was just, there's an amazing freedom in just not resisting the thoughts that come. And they still grab occasionally, really grab, and then and then you see it, you've, you've grabbed it with the belief. But what a beautiful freedom when it just doesn't matter if they come or don't come. Mm -hmm. It's just, and then the, and from the movie, with watching the movie, like this is always the centre of the movie, isn't it? Mm. Here, it's always here. Always here. And it's always happening here. now. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Complete. Beautiful. Mm. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. I don't think the freedom's from the thoughts, it's with the thoughts. Yeah, you're right. Mm. Yeah. It's yeah. not from them, it's like, yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Mm. Beautiful. Go on, Cole, say something. Anyone? No. Can we go with another time for another tune? Then? Time for another tune, Bob says. Kavisha, <laughs> would you like to?
like, why not? <laughs> do my, why, why don't we do some of the old sing together? Yeah? Okay, um, okay, here we go. Um, just got to work out what. <laughs> Everything is me. Everything is me. Makes no difference. Makes no difference. Can you see? Can you see? Everything is you. Can you see? Shivaya. <laughs> and yes, and we have Bill says the sound of the didgeridoo expresses the fullness of life. The ever present drone is there, life, infused simultaneously with the little burps and bumps. <laughs> there is no dividing line between the drone and the little grunts and burps <laughs> they are one expression <coughs> yeah <laughs> and it moves you on a level beyond conceptions beyond concepts you know like comparing the sounds to something yeah. is still a, you know no partiality no what what was it no preference no, no preference no comparison <laughs> no partiality no comparison yeah. Yeah, and yet, of course, the comparison arises. Mm -hmm. And as it arises, it's just part of the dream. It's just part of the dance, dancing. But yeah, would you like to give us another sample since we have 
Fullness of life. from Laura, brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, beautiful. Yeah, um, I played a bit of a, just a from the straight from the heart there. Um, mm. Just what came through. And um, then I kind of, my mind sort of kicked in at the right at the end. And um, I played a rhythm, um, went into like a rhythm that I was taught uh, uh, from an elder called Dolphin dolphin rhythm mm. and that the dolphin um, expresses freedom mm. so I thought that was like mm. yeah, yeah fitting for today yeah just when we yeah. feel uh, a while like when Carisha was playing it's all about of course this get up and dance <laughs> 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 you know <laughs> but when you play I really want to be still and I feel that vibration from root chakra coming in my belly and coming mm. up. Mm. It's beautiful. I wish like mm. you know, it could just I was thinking but even meditating on it, like put did you do you know, headphone and just feel that vibration. It's just okay. so mm. yeah. grounding. Mm. Yeah. And we have a comment from uh, JB with all capital le letters, free birds. And yeah. really, yeah. And so special. Thank you, Goosebumps. Thank from Laura. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, um, I think we're all sick of being in the waiting room. <laughs> the same before. <laughs> I think that's, I spent my whole life there mm. waiting to go somewhere and find something or seek something. And it's like, yeah, just. Mm just now and yeah that's it <laughs> yeah oh that's beautiful sick of the waiting room and wanting to go somewhere be somewhere else do something else something else but here now you can really fully embrace the here and fully celebrate that here because that's all we ever had and peter has a nice I, I think it goes something like um be here now mm. be somewhere else later <laughs> Your luggage, that's another matter. That's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Another Peter. Yeah. 
that. I just want to say that um, everything we everything we approach seems to be an impossible situation. Isn't it? Everything we do conceptually about this brings us to an impossibility. You know, we can't have anything because everything is inherently empty. You know? We can't ever arrive anywhere. You can't, there's no outcome to this. <laughs> so there's no waiting room. What do you? you know, well, what's wrong with the waiting room anyway? You know, these questions all arise in the mind, don't they? <laughs> just suffer. Well, it's all just bloody <laughs> an impossible situation. That's all we have to, I believe, um, acknowledge. It's all uh, never going to get it, never going to arrive, never going to be awakened. Nothing. Because you already are that. Mm. 10,000 lives. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The story of 10,000 lives. <laughs> mm. So. Oh, I think but uh, well, just just one uh, one thing, just to finish that idea off, is that you know in the impossibility, that's all we have to rest with. Just be there, and something will happen. Yeah, something beyond us will happen. That's the thing. We're not in control of anything at all. Already. I'm not <laughs> different with you. Happening now. <laughs> Uh, I came across a <coughs> beautiful quote uh, recently by uh, uh, Kafka, the uh, existentialist uh, writer, and he said, oh, the, the search for identity is like a bird looking for a cage. <laughs> you know, when we're already free, but the search for identity is like a bird looking for a cage. Oh, lovely. That's beautiful. <laughs> I was um, recently part of a documentary about the Tarantella dance and the guy who interviewed me, he said, tell me about identity. And I said, oh, uh, like as in cultural identity, you know, Italian, you know, your connection with the dance and all that. And I said, I find that really hard to question, to answer because I don't know who, I don't, I'm go I don't know who I am anymore. And then he's the one that said it to me. He said, oh, yeah, the, the search for identity. Kafka said that the uh, search for identity is like looking for a cage. I said, so there's your answer. <laughs> yeah. you know, that's... Lucky? Um, thanks Bob as always that was amazing um, and the, for everyone who played music that was just <laughs> so amazing um, yeah just sitting here there's like sitting here listening to Bob listening to everyone talk it just kind of as normally happens in these talks I slowly found myself relaxing mm. and there's just this beautiful well-being in this moment like as soon as you just let go and you're here, there's this beautiful well-being. And it is like a well. It's like a wellspring or just like a well of being. Mm. And it's just, yeah, it's just beautiful. And we're talking about the waiting room. And as soon as you just kind of stop, you realize like the waiting room, whatever you're waiting for is this moment right now. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's there the whole time. And I'm the same. I've had all this waiting, like waiting for whatever. <laughs> and the moment you let it go and you're here, it's just well-being. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. It doesn't matter what's coming or going. Um, yeah, and then the music just kind of really sunk me into it further. So oh, okay. I just wanted to express that it was beautiful. And thank you. Oh, thank you for that. That's, that's gorgeous. Oh, uh, I have... I, yeah, go on. I just wanted to add on to that as well. <laughs> okay. It's only right here now that the full expression of the intelligent energy exists. Mm. So you feel the fullness of life here, mm. only here. Mm. Yeah. Beautiful, huh? Beautiful. Mm. And true healing. Mm. And I have a comment here from Bill. And he says, Bob is un way unwavering in his message. He simply suggests that there is not life and you. You don't have a life. Life is just expressing through the body-mind. 
just like life expressing us three that is just life starts from there mm. it's a beautiful reminder mm. thank you Bill and Vivek says free birds sitting in a room and singing song of freedom <laughs> yeah <laughs> that was gorgeous what, what do you say Loki you know you find that well of just being and acknowledging it bringing that joy of being to the fourth rather than and most of the spiritual seekers are waiting for the what is it a w awakening moment experience of bliss of cosmic union something that is not happening now well everything and the only thing where the things are happening is now nothing's happening in the past nothing's happening in the future they're just thoughts that moment now and not waiting for anything for this moment to be any different than it was than it is just opens up that well where the life just shines through well of being well being <laughs> Yeah. I'll say the idea of the bird searching for the cage, it's so clear. Like it, it, I mean, all our lives, like thinking back to, you know, even as a teen or when you're trying to form that identity right. and even mm -hmm. as an adult, you know, you go to a party, you can't talk about football. Well, I must learn about football now because everyone in Australia talks about football at parties. <laughs> right? So I should really study the sports pages. So you go home and study the sports and it's so bloody boring. I can't be bothered. Yeah. And, then, and then you go to another party and think, oh, yeah, I forgot about all that. I've got to learn about football. I can't talk about anything, can I? But that idea of identity, like mm -hmm. that search for identity, it's so clear looking back, isn't it? Like, yeah. And at all different ages as well, not just as a teenager. It's you know, constantly the, updating. Yeah, throughout the whole of life, that desperation to mm. yeah, Define. develop an identity. Yeah. Uh, what about That's when you go to a place and people talk about their home renovations? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, get me out of here. <laughs> <laughs> you or when you um bump into people on the street and if you you need to like recall your entire identity that you have for them otherwise you're gonna make a massive faux pas and they'll never forgive you and accept you again so <laughs> especially if you forget their name or anything you know well it, it but it's handy when you're you know if you're a spiritual seeker because usually people change your name so change their name so if you forget their name just go oh now what are you calling yourself now and I find that what very interesting <laughs> Yeah, I find very interesting that as we get older, what's the first thing of the memory that goes is names. Mm. The, name, <laughs> the name goes. <laughs> and I think that, you know, only the essence remains. <laughs> what's your name again? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> all of us now, we're all going down that road. You know? Sorry, who's speaking now? <laughs> you don't know me, do you? <laughs> the mystery is speaking. We have another comment from Bill, and he says, Quarks. Stars, planets, trees, animals, always endlessly changing. And the apparent observer, always endlessly changing. Innumerable combinations and computations. No fixed point anywhere. Uh, there is only this field of all possibilities. But who would be there to know this? And Laura says, awesome meeting. And Vivek names, knowledge is cage. And we get the guitar uh, speaking. Would, just when you were saying that, I was reminded of um, some poetry of Kabir, uh, which says, it is time to put up a love swing, tie your body, tie your mind, and you will fall into the arms of the secret one you love. There is a secret one who lives inside of us. The planets, the stars, the universe pass through his hands like beads. 
Oh, beloved one, look inside and see the one like an eagle in the rising sun. It is time to put up a love swing, tie your body tight on mine, and you'll fall into the arms of the secret one you love. There is a secret one who lives inside of us the planets, the stars, the universe glow through his hands like bees. Um, one of the cages here is that, like this body, just um, reacts and tenses up to every tiny discomfort, and it's doing it all the time. And and a bit of the process here today was just noticing that constant tensing. <laughs> mm, isn't it amazing? It can be somatic, yeah, as much as yeah. thought. I have the same situation. I'm in this really, really sensitive, super sensitive nervous system, which gets overwhelmed with noise, with smells, with lights with everything and that's just mind-blowing that's amazing you know i could have a long list of complaints about it but why this is not who i am this is the system which has been conditioned by the environment and responds to the environment with all sorts of responses that may not be you know ideal loving or whatever the concepts of social com yes but it is amazing because it's not personal and it is something that like, wow, every response is wow. It's like you see the wildlife responding. There is also a lot of discomfort, oh, much more, I guess, <laughs> than for us. You know, if you think of night coming and all the predators and the rains and colds and everything. And yet there is a presence which is amazed with every response, whether acceptable, socially approval, approved or not approved. It's just whatever comes up. Fascinating. Narrative, even a narrative, you know, judgment, whatever comes up, it comes up on the empty screen. It doesn't come up to me who is discerning between pleasant, unpleasant, uh, good or bad. No, it comes up on absolutely clear, empty slate and it's just mm, nothing good or bad, but thinking makes it so. If there is no thinking, it's not good or bad, it's just wow. <laughs> what uh, what exquisite music, singing, just beautiful. That's Laura says, yes, I, both hands and heart to it. <laughs> See the difference it makes? Pretty quiet here now. When those voices start and people join in, it raises the energy in the room. <coughs> the sense of well-being becomes much greater. 
and hopefully no one wants to be anywhere else experiencing anything else. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you. Nico, you know, Kat, when you said that you got that active nervous system, I also noticed that I do have a, you know, really active one. Mm -hmm. And like about lights, like I can, you know, at no. night almost is dark in my place and mm -hmm. thankfully my son is totally loving it as well. So it's like so, so much noise or so much um, light or everything, it's activating that. Mm -hmm. I noticed, you know, I wasn't even aware of it. And that creates a lot of thoughts, I realize, mm -hmm. somehow, I don't know how. And it's just super active, like this mm -hmm. nervous system is making this super active. And then now I'm coming to that um, space that when I actually do some breathing exercise, finally I think all this is started after coming to Bob and yourself, like mm -hmm. I wasn't aware how body um, exercises are important for me mm -hmm. because I can create a space between that super active nervous system and my mind being again more super active and then who I am. I can't really create a space because it's all taking over me, you know, and there is no space left to mm -hmm for that recognition to happen. So I just go back to, I'm just doing that, you know, mm. like just all that, that calms my body mm. and that nervous system. So I get to the space that you're saying. Yeah. I need some practices to get there, even <laughs> though I know that there is no practices needed, but I feel at this stage I do need it. It's not really that there's no practice needed. See how life self-organizes and facilitates and delivers whatever is needed. You know, breathing is needed, so breathing is supplied. If the relaxing into the space is needed, that is supplied. It may come as a thought. It can, it can come as an inspiration set of meditations or practices. Mm -hmm. As long as you see that this is the life that is supplying, not the me having an idea that I'm a practitioner of something. That is the yes. freedom is not obscured then, yes. because the credit is not given to separate individual, which doesn't exist. That's it. Like mm. now my uh, inclination is when I do the meditation, it's like uh, a practice for life to, for the instinct to be able to actually, I mean, basically to let go of meditator in a way, mm. just to be with the sound or whatever, to calm down, to be able to yeah. be the sound or whatever, and then hopefully apply that to the daily life, then I probably won't need meditation then, <laughs> maybe. It's not that there's Thank no you so yeah. much. It's Bob. not that there's no practice, but there's no practicer. Practicer, yeah. Practicing, yeah. that happens, yeah. practicing happens. Yeah. Practicing happens, like practicing like you were a child and you practiced walking, but there was no you, it was just life doing the walking, I-N-G. And then the mind came and said, no, this is I, this is me, this is little Johnny or little Mitra. <laughs> that is just a narrative. Life goes on besides and regardless of the credit-taking pa uh, habit pattern, which is just a piece of a software that helps facilitating. And did, did you want to say something, Kabir? Oh. There'll be a meeting tomorrow morning. Yes, uh, Julia reminds uh, anyone who wants to join Bob and Julia on a Zoom call, uh, 9.30 Melbourne time, afternoon for America. And if there is anyone from Europe or the UK, we have meetings on your mornings, uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, that's evening for us. And link is all on the website, siloedbobadamson.com slash meetings. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Paul. And thank you, everyone. Thank you.